So hi guys and welcome to the practical. We will just go through the clouded leopards, which is the species we're going to be taking a look at, and how phylogenetics played a role in their conservation. So clouded leopards are arboreal creatures that reside in densely vegetated and remote areas of southeastern Asian subtropical and tropical forest. They are very secretive. What we know about them often comes from individuals in captivity. They are thought to be the evolutionary link between the big and the cat, the big and the small cat species, sorry, and the clouded leopard are indeed the smallest of the big cats. In the early part of the 21st century, scientists were unsure whether the two populations of clouded leopard were the same species or different species. They were genetically isolated and were thought to have been so for some time. However, they were being treated as one species called Neophilus nebulosa and were classed as vulnerable by the IUCN. One population can be found from the foothills of the Himalayas through much of mainland Southeast Asia and China. The other population are restricted to Borneo and Sumatra, although fossils indicate they likely lived in Java, but they are now extinct. So here's the one population, and the other one is here. I know they're two separate colours, but they are the same population. It just refers to the fact that they reside on separate islands. Now, both populations were declining rapidly. They were threatened due to habitat loss and poaching, and the habitat loss is being caused by extensive deforestation and agriculture expansion, leading to fragmentation of the population, which we know is bad because it can lead to severe genetic bottlenecks. Borneo has one of the highest deforestation rates worldwide, and the poaching is driven by a desire for decoration, traditional Asian medicines, and tonics. So we're going to build a phylogenetic tree of the clouded leopards and other big cats to see how the two clouded leopards sit in the phylogenetic tree. We will then go through the finding of the scientific paper that decided their evolutionary relationship and conservation status to see how they made that decision and what happened after. Uh, just a bit of advice, if you haven't sat the evolutionary biology module and you feel you would like a little bit more background information on taxonomy and how to read a phylogenetic tree, please watch the video about that before you start the practical.